Hey, it's your Reverend Aegis here, and in this video, I'm going to walk you through how my group got the true genius achievement. And of course, as usual, you'll see this from my perspective as the tank. In my opinion, of all of the dungeon trifectas that give titles so far, and there are six of them, True Genius is the most difficult one, not only from a survivability standpoint, but also from a time standpoint for the speedrun component. So in this video, we're going to go over a lot of different strategies for how to cut time off of your total time, as well as strategies for avoiding deaths. If you're going for this achievement, it means you're already familiar with all of the three different hard modes in this dungeon. If you're looking for a hard mode clear, please watch the other videos that I have that highlight how to complete each of the individual hard modes, as those will teach you all of the mechanics you need to know. This video is more about high-level strategies for getting the job done quickly and efficiently without deaths. Having a diverse group comp is very useful here, so that way you can provide a range of buffs. Our group uses a Magplar, a Magsork, a DK Healer, and a Necrotank. As far as the support gearing goes, I am wearing Encrates, Drake's Rush, and Arcasis. And our healer is wearing Spell Power Cure, Master Architect, and Symphony of Blades. As we come upon the first boss, we have our healer and our Magsork running Crushing Shock because they are our interrupters for the fight, whereas our Magplar is using a full damage roto and not really worrying about the interrupts. The attack that we need to interrupt right there is important to interrupt and not get a stack of like we just got a stack of because it lowers your total magicka and stamina resource pools, which of course nerfs your damage. And nerfing your damage is a big deal because the speedrun here is very difficult to get. Because this fight is very spread out, and because I'm wearing Encrates and we have a DK healer providing the Engulfing Flames buff, I recommend using Maw of the Infernal as Monster Helm. Something like Zahn's does more damage, but our DPS aren't always in range because they have to avoid that scream mechanic. So Maw of the Infernal actually does a really good job of, one, following the boss around and keeping that high uptime on the monster helm damage, as well as it gets buffed by Encrates and Engulfing Plants. For this run, our group actually made two pretty big mistakes in this fight, which cost us about 14 seconds of time. One is we got hit with two stacks of that Scream, which nerfed our damage quite a bit, and we got hit with them all before we ever reached 50%. For our good runs, we usually finished around 3 minutes and 10 seconds total time from the start of the dungeon through the first boss. Here it took us about 3 minutes and 24 to 26 seconds, so we added quite a lot of time. The second mistake we made that hurt our time was one of our DPS forgot to put on Maw the Infernal, and he got zero ticks of damage from his monster helm of Zahn's the entire fight, which again, big DPS loss. What we did really well to make up for it, to make this not too bad, is I kept my uptime on Crusher pretty much 100%. Whenever he charged, I replaced my Wall of Elements, and I was really good about getting my bashes off every 18 seconds for Drake's Rush, as well as popping a potion around every 30 seconds for Arcasis. So our uptime on Major Slayer from our healer, and as well as our ability to drop ultimates frequently, was pretty good. So that did make up for a lot of the time that we lost, even though we made those mistakes. My group handles the next ad waves differently than other true genius groups that we've seen. We found this way to be very efficient. Other ways may be efficient, but we didn't really test them out because we thought this strategy would work for time, and it did. So what happens is I run into this room first and taunt the two stone husks and the two ads. My entire group runs by and runs to the next ad that turns into the hulking werewolf. When they kill the Hulking Werewolf, of course, you drop the two potions that allow your group to turn into Hulking Werewolves themselves. Once the ad that they're attacking right now that you can't see because they're ahead of me, once they kill it, they let me know that he's transforming. That tells me, okay, I need to taunt all of my ads one more time, and then I'm going to book it all the way over to them. By the time I get there, they're going to have the potions, they're going to synergize them, and they're going to be transformed into werewolves. Now this part's very important. Our healer goes backwards. Our healer goes backwards and kills all four of those adds. One DPS runs forward and kills those two stone husks that you just saw me run by. The other DPS, the one that has pop lock, runs ahead, jumps down, and unlocks this door right here. That allows me to run in there with him, 
And it allows our other DPS, who's still a werewolf, to come charging in, so we can clean up these ads very quickly. So, you're going to see us kill these things. There's our DPS, Hulking Werewolf. We knock this out really fast, and that allows us to get these buffs. Meanwhile, our healer, after he finished killing his two stone husks and those other two adds, he comes in last. He makes sure to run by the door that's locked to trigger the cutscene that takes a little while to open that door. So by the time my group is done in that room getting our buffs, we run back through here, and by the time we get up there, that door is open and allows me and the two DPS to start killing the next stone husk. During this time that we were running, that's about the time our DPS, who didn't have Maw of the Infernal in the first fight, realized that he wasn't wearing Maw of the Infernal. So he actually took the time to switch it here, which is why there's only one DPS with me, and there he is just joining us now. So we did lose another couple seconds here, which again was okay because we knew we'd finish ahead of time based on how our other previous runs went. Now I've said this in other Trifecta videos before, but Arcasis and Drake's Rush is a fantastic combo for Trifecta runs because it allows you to drop ultimates pretty regularly, especially on ad pulls, which makes the ad pulls go a lot faster than they normally go as well. And it means your group isn't wasting uptime on ultimates, it's just waiting for a boss, because by the time you get to the boss, you'll probably have ultimates already. It also allows our healer to pretty much build 500 ultimate before each boss fight pretty easily. And that allows us to have a really, really high uptime on Major Slayer to start the fight. We get 50 seconds of Major Slayer immediately at the beginning of pretty much every boss fight because of Arcasis and Drake's Rush. If, as the tank, you are not used to wearing Arcasis and Drake's Rush, you may want to get some practice so that way you can maximize the benefits to your group. You need to bash every 18 seconds with Drake's Rush to give that major heroism. And to maximize Arcasis, you do need two infused purple pieces of jewelry with potion cooldown in chance. That'll make it so your potion cooldowns are right at 30 seconds, which is exactly the amount of time that it takes for the cooldown to happen for Arcasis to give everyone a 43 ultimate. So again, two purple infused pieces of jewelry. Gold makes it where you actually can pop a potion too early and miss out on the bonus. So two purple potion cooldown infused jewelry will give you the maximum amount of ultimate for our cases. This second boss was probably the most frustrating boss to progress in terms of speed and no death. So I'm going to give you some strategies here that hopefully help with both of these things. When we first started our prog, we were finishing this second hard mode around the 17 minute mark. You only have 25 minutes to complete all three of the hard modes, so 17 minutes was not getting the job done. Eventually, we cut that time down to 14 minutes, then we cut it down to 13 minutes, and then we were still having trouble, we were still just finishing the final boss at like 26 or 27 minutes at that point, so we said, okay, we know the second boss is kind of the linchpin there, so what do we need to do to get it done? So we came up with a lot of strategies to cut our time down, and we actually got our time down to 10 minutes as our best run. In this one, we finished right around 10 minutes and 40 seconds. From all of our other attempts during this progression, we knew that as long as we were under 11 minutes, we would have plenty of time for the final boss to finish under 25 minutes. So 10 minutes and 40 seconds, not a big deal, especially considering how much time we lost in the first boss due to the mistakes that we made. So you'll notice for some time-saving strategies, what we did in the beginning, we dropped all our ultimates immediately to get that big burn, and of course after that, I applied my Drake's Rush and Arcasis buffs. At 80% and 60%, those adds on the left come up. We ignore them until 60%. Those are the things that put out the big uh, resource drains, those big puddles on the ground to follow the team around. Again, we ignore them until 60%, because after you kill them, they're actually on a timer. They don't come out of percentages anymore, they come out on a time. So we want to actually kill those two things on the left very close to each other, and hopefully not have to deal with them again, or only have to deal with them again for a very short amount of time during the last 10 to 20% in execute. So I pull the boss over to them when they're both up, and we cleave them down together. Then the boss is pushed to about 40%, and at 40%, the third one comes up. So we finish killing those two that originally came up, and then we go full execute mode on the boss from 40% to 0%. I do hold the boss in the cleave on the third stone husk, but we don't even need to worry about killing it, because if we do a good job, we'll just kill the boss before really we have to worry about any other mechanics. 
The last thing on the time saving that I'm going to recommend here is for the final burn, it's better to coordinate all your ultimates together. So make sure you drop all of your ultimates together. So we dropped a Colossus, a Warhorn, a Destruction Ultimate, and the Atro from our Sork. We dropped them all at the same time for this final execute. That way we maximized the damage and minimized our time. Even though we could have, some of us could have staggered the ultimates, and obviously it made more sense to drop them all together. So that's how we saved a lot of time here. The other recommendation I have is during fire phase, everybody should kind of stay in the middle of the room until you get two fires that go out, and then I pull the boss all the way to the end for that big explosion. Other than that, it's important that people don't stack in this fight, because if they stack, the lightning that goes out will kill someone instantly. So staying spread apart is very crucial for this fight, and making sure your healer is healing the crap out of people during the fire phase, that's going to prevent those deaths. While we're cleaning up the next couple of ad pulls here, I want to go over whether you should grab the side buffs or not. So the first side buff is obvious. Yes, absolutely grab it. It's going to boost your damage of your group, which is going to result in a net time saving, as well as it's going to make werewolf uh, phase during the final fight a lot easier. Not only that, but there's a locked door that you have to wait for a cutscene anyway, so you might as well grab the buff while you're waiting for the cutscene. It doesn't actually add that much extra time, and again, there's a huge net savings in time because of the extra damage that you'll have. The second buff provides stamina and magic of regeneration, and while you're in werewolf form, provides ultimate generation. This one isn't crucial to get. If you want to get it, I recommend only getting it if you finish the second fight in 10 minutes or less. Otherwise, you're going to be cutting your speed run very close. My group decided pretty early on in our progression that we didn't need that second buff, so we chose to skip it pretty much every time. So we ran by it, and we started killing this ad, which also turned into one of these hulking werewolves. And here's how we dealt with this hulking werewolf transformation phase. So we killed this guy, and again, the same two people that turned into hulking werewolves turned into them again. Now, me and the other DPS, we waited here for them to finish their transformation. As soon as they finish their transformation, I'm going to run in, and I'm going to drop my crowd control. And one of our guys is going to charge ahead and going to taunt that white werewolf. That white werewolf is crucial to taunt, because if he's not taunting, he's probably going to kill me with a heavy attack, so I'm not paying attention, or the other DPS. The other DPS runs ahead and kills all the ads in this room. That takes care of all the ads. The healer is the one that stays far behind because we want our two DPS and me to be ahead of the group in order to kill the ads in the side room to grab the third buff. Now the third buff I highly recommend getting as it drastically increases your survivability on the final fight and drastically increases your survivability as a werewolf behemoth during that hard mode. This ad wave up here in the third side room is a lot beefier than it looks at first glance, and it does a ton of damage, so be extra careful here as the tank that you, one, grab aggro and everything, and two, pay close attention to your health. You'll notice that my food actually wore out as I was running up here, so it's good that I didn't die, and that our healer caught up in time, so that way all those stacks of dots didn't end up killing me, because that would have been bad, it would have ruined a run, which was a pretty good run. One thing that I want to point out about not getting the second buff is that we are going to get a Blood Knight on the final fight because of it. The Blood Knights are extra difficult to deal with, especially during the run mechanic of the hard mode, because they stun your group and they also run really fast. So we will have a Blood Knight to deal with. Luckily for us, RNG favored us in this run and we got the Blood Knight earlier than the final run phase, so we didn't have to deal with it when it is actually the most threatening. We have two ad pulls before the final fight. This ad pull, it's just important that the tank grabs the White Werewolf and that Durzog. Those are really the only two threats to the group. And as the tank, just be extra careful, you don't get hit by a heavy attack. So I just perma block here because why not? Finally, we have the last ad pull, which has two stone husks. So we drop all our ultimates on these two stone husks, kill them pretty quickly, and then it is time to move on to the final fight. Now, if anybody needs to change any skills or change any gear, as some people do for the final fight, the best way to do it, if you are on console, because you don't have the benefit of the changing room, you actually need to go in and change everything, you can simply just wait outside of this room, and that will not activate 
It will not put you in combat as long as you're outside that door. Meanwhile, someone goes in and activates the cutscene, which takes forever. So as long as you're out here changing things, you're good. Now you'll notice here that I do change several things. First, I put on Race Against Time for the run phase. That's going to remove any snares from me and also give me Major Expedition, which is hugely important. Second, on my front bar, I want some extra block mitigation, so I put on Defensive Stance. And then I also replace in my back bar, I replace Necrotic Potency. I replace it with more Recoil, as the stamina drain here is pretty intense because you're pretty much perma-blocking as the tank. So with that, I'm ready to go into this next room. Of course, I noticed now that my food ran out, so now I'm really ready to go into the next room. Turn into a Hulking Werewolf, and we're ready to pretty much get the final phase of this fight started. So the rest of my group already got started because it took me a little longer than usual to finish switching my stuff. But that's okay, that's not really a huge loss of time, as they can always help me kill this final pressure valve. So, once the final pressure valve goes down, I'm as the tank, I'm going to go activate the hard mode. The rest of my group is going to go stack on the red carpet between the stone husks while I activate the hard mode and then taunt the boss to get the fight started. Now, if you're not completely comfortable with all the mechanics in this hard mode, please watch my video, How to Tank Stone Garden Hard Mode 3 Arcasis, as it provides a ton of information on pretty much everything that you would encounter or need to do during this hard mode, all phases included, in very, very elaborate detail. Now, regarding CP 2.0 for this, one of the things that's very helpful that all four of us put on as one of our slottables was the Slippery slottable. Slippery is the thing that allows you to automatically break free every 21 seconds at no cost, which is fantastic, especially for the poison phase of this fight, which is what happens after the first werewolf behemoth phase. Oftentimes, people will get stunned and not realize they're stunned because they're just stacked on top of the platform behind us, and they can't really see themselves very well. So Slippery actually prevents a lot of deaths by automatically breaking you free when that happens and you don't notice it. The other thing that some of us chose to do was we slotted Strategic Reserve, which increases your health recovery by quite a bit depending on the amount of ultimate that you have. We actually end up saving a lot of our ultimate during this fight, except for our one DPS who is regularly dropping his Atro. But the reason why we save our ultimates is because we want to have enough ultimate during the Werewolf Behemoth phase to trivialize killing those stone husks. So Strategic Reserve is actually very helpful for survivability here as well. You can see here that we just killed the Blood Knight, so again, like I said, we have good RNG. The Blood Knight came out early rather than during the run phase. Ads come out in this first phase at 90%, 80%, and 70%. The ads are crucial to take down, at least the 90% and 80% ads are crucial to take down, as it makes it very difficult for the tank to survive if there are ads, especially if there are multiple ads, so killing them as they come up is important. Now, when the third ad comes up, though, at 70%, we ignore it, and we just push the boss to 60%. That's because once the boss goes to 60%, he goes up, and we turn into werewolves, and that little ad's not going to kill us when we're werewolves. After that, we stack all four of these dudes here, and we go through our series of bashes and dropping our ultimates. Again, we use the stack mechanic that's explained very thoroughly in my hard mode video, because again, if you can just stack them all up and drop ultimates and bashes, then you don't really need to deal with all of the extra mechanics. Not only that, but it saves so much time. There's another strategy, which is probably how the developers designed it, where you separate the four of them, but that adds a ridiculous amount of time when you can just stack them all up and kill them and not worry about anything. Now, it's important that you get those stacks down and you get the rotation down and everybody has their ultimates, but once you do that, it's very difficult to, to die if everybody's doing their job properly and doesn't miss a mash and doesn't miss an ultimate drop. So after that, this is where my team stacks up on that platform behind me. Now as the tank, it's very important that you don't wander very far from right in front of the stairs. So pretty much you're just going to go left or right. If you get too far away, then our cases actually throws something directly on your group and it's probably going to kill them because they're stacked up there. So you can't really leave this general area, you just need to go left or right. So if you need to roll dodge, roll dodge straight across. If you need to taunt something, barely walk out and taunt. This is where the slippery passive is also important. All that poison is rolling around. Sometimes, although it's rare, sometimes that poison goes through onto the group of stacked players. 
And when that happens, it hits them for a lot of damage and stuns them. If the healer gets stunned, it's a really big deal because then, one, the tank is at risk, but two, those squishy DPS are also at risk if they take any damage over time, which they will because you do take a lot of damage here even when you're stacked in there. So slippery is important because it will automatically break you free. Again, ads, they're going to come out here at 50%, 40%, and 30%, and it's very important that when the ads come up at 50 and 40 that they're taken down as soon as possible. And then after the 30%, when the 30% one comes out, again, the DPS are just going to tap target Arcasis only, burn Arcasis to 20. Then we're going to go into the second Werewolf Behemoth phase, and we transform with the third ad up, again, because the third ad is not going to kill you while you're transforming. Effectively, the second Werewolf Behemoth phase is exactly the same as the first one if you are doing the stack and burn strategy. If you're not, you're going to need to deal with the March for Death mechanic. If you're just stacking and burning, you don't need to change anything. All you need to do is really tighten up your rotation. It's bash 1, ulti 1. Bash 2, ulti 2. Bash 3, ulti 3, bash 4, and then ulti 4 if necessary. And you see they all die. You don't need to worry about anything. So that's the strategy I highly recommend. It just takes a little practice and group coordination to get it right to avoid dying, because you pretty much die instantly if you don't do it right. Now our healer, during that werewolf in the phase, he only drops his ultimate if necessary, because again, you don't necessarily need it. Why that's good is because our healer is the one that gives us Major Slayer, and he had a full 500 ultimate barrier that he just gave us, so we got 50 seconds of Major Slayer to start this, plus we had a barrier to help us survive this first run mechanic. Again, I use Race Against Time because if you step in those lightning pools, it snares you. That barrier is really nice because there's always going to be an add up in the beginning, because once you push him to 38, an add comes out. So having a barrier prevents some unnecessary deaths, and it lasts a long time, and we get that major slayer. Anytime after a run phase, you always need to watch out for our cases charging into the group. It's a big cleave. We have lost so many of our true genius runs simply because somebody dies from that charge because they weren't paying attention or didn't see it. So it's very important that after every run phase, that charge is avoided. Next, anytime there's an add up, the add is by far the priority gotta kill that ad every time it's up, and that will wreck you during run phase. Now, ads usually come out at 38%, 30%, and 22%, but we notice sometimes that we only got two ads, including on this run. We're not sure why, because normally you get three, but we started only getting two out of the three ads, which, of course, was nice. Um, so we actually avoided having to deal with an extra mechanic there. So again, we're going to watch out for the run, and there's the charge, and we avoided it. Now, of course, Whenever there's not an ad, we can go full burn on our cases. Whenever there is an ad, I always ask my group, please just wreck the ad, because there's nothing worse than dealing with an ad as the tank here and having to run, especially those bristle backs, because for whatever reason, the bristle backs have a ridiculous range on their light attacks and will nip at you from behind, even if you're like half a room ahead of them. So here's our final run phase. The bristle back's almost dead. You'll see here that we're just going to turn around and it has so little health that we're just going to pretty much light attack you to death. And it is going to die in the middle of the run phase, which is really nice. So, that was the last run phase that we're probably going to need to deal with. Our case is going to run in, we're going to watch out for the charge, there's our last barrier to really help with anything extra. And now, pretty much, I'm going to play it safe and pretty much just going to block here as my team executes the last few percentage points of our cases. And there you go. There is True Genius from the perspective of a tank. If you liked the content here, feel free to like the video or leave a comment on it. And of course, if you liked what you saw, please subscribe to my channel so you can see more content like this.